guys, welcome back to my channel. We're here for part two of the rule book. So I'm gonna try to cover everything that's interesting and this will be the last part to this series. Uh, please let me know any more questions in the comments below and for the people who commented on the last one with your questions, I really appreciate you taking the time to respond and I'll try to do a little Q&A, get ready with me uh, for the next one. So last time we covered like the heavy hitters like discipline and male privileges. Today we're going to go into some of the technical stuff like clothing, dress code, what we were allowed to have in terms of makeup. And I'll also let you screenshot any page that I go over. So we are gonna start with the clothing and dress code and I'm gonna hold it for you for a second so that you can take a screenshot. Uh, like I did in the last one, I'm not going to be able to go over every single thing word for word because it would just take me all day and some stuff is just boring. So let's go ahead and start with clothing inventory and dress code. The clothing inventory list is a standardized amount of clothing and other items that each student may have while at the center. This list has been adapted for the following reasons. Some students will continually ask their family to purchase more than they actually need. Some parents, as a result of feeling guilty, tend to overcompensate by continuing to purchase items when it's not necessary and space is limited. All of our clothes were inventoried. All of our personal items were inventoried. So when a pass was coming up, they would take us out of school or something and they would take us to our bunk and they would count all the items and then we would get a list to bring to our parents and anything that we did not have that was allotted and these amount of things we would shop for on our visits. So our visits weren't spent that much like with quality time with the parents. A lot of our visit time was spent shopping and trying to fill these needs. So we were allowed eight t-shirts, five polo shirts, three shirts, four blouses, and three sweatshirts. Um, some of these things were included with the school uniform. So they gave us polos, they gave us um, hoodless sweatshirts, and they gave us t-shirts and then all of our t-shirts, polos, and sweatshirts were in the same color and whatever dorm you were in, you would wear that color. So I had to wear yellow for most of my program. Uh, at the end, they moved me dorms and I got to wear green and that was way better. So rules for shirts, no tight fitting or low cut shirts of any time. No tank tops or spaghetti string strap, straps or shirts revealing midriff. Nothing see through or sleeveless. Necklines may not be lower than two fingers below the collarbone. So this, um, this was like the rule of thumb, two fingers below the collarbone. So if your shirt came down like to here, it would be denied. Everything that you brought in onto campus had to be tried on. When you first got to the program, the first thing you did was try on all your clothes for staff, which was so traumatizing because you just have random strangers uh, taking you separated from your parents immediately and then you had to put on a fashion show. It was the weirdest thing. Uh, I remember mine like it was yesterday. I had a woman named Miss Kate who did my inventory. She sent very many things back and she was very sassy. Uh, she's still there today. Another rule was that if you raised your hands up and your stomach was showing, then that shirt would have to be sent back. A lot of things got sent back. It was very frustrating, like I said before. Um, pants, pants may not be tight fitting or real baggy. This page twice says real baggy. And somebody in my last video accused me of writing this rule book myself and let it be known that I would never describe anything as real baggy. Look, it says it at the bottom here too. Shorts may not be tight fitting or real baggy. So anyway, pants were not allowed to be real baggy. Uh, jeans must be conservative and neat. We couldn't have holes in our pants. We couldn't have any clothing that was distressed. We couldn't have logos, we couldn't have um, writing. Uh, sometimes you would get away with having a pattern kind of like this. That would be allowed, but it would have to be really quite loose. Um, the two finger rule. And then the pants that we had um, had to be one pair of jeans, five pair of khakis, uh, two dress slacks, and two lounge uh, slacks. Let me show you the next page. You can take a picture. So these are all the items in terms of socks and undergarments. We were allowed to have 12 socks, two camisoles, three undershirts, 10 nylons, which were mandatory. We had to wear nylons with skirts um, for church. 12 underwear, two slips, five bras. 
uh, skirts and dresses. We were allowed four dresses or skirts and one black skirt was required for when we went around to do our ministry work. When we went up on stage, we had to wear white shirts and black skirts. Uh, footwear, no platform shoes, ankle boots, men's wing tips, styles, thick soles, tire tread soles, combat boots, high heels over two and a half inches, or stiletto heels, nothing backless. We could have one dress shoe for church, one casual brown shoe uh, for the class. People would usually wear Sperry's. Um, two pair of sneakers, one for PE and one for yard work, nothing backless. One pair of shower shoes or flip-flops and one pair of slippers. We had to wear flip-flops and showers because foot fungus went around all the time here because we were all sharing the showers, 20 girls to four showers. Everywhere. We weren't allowed leather or leather looking items, no pictures, letters, symbols. We were allowed two jackets, one for church, one for casual, three sweaters, and jewelry, no mystical, gothic, or Eastern, Eastern style of jewelry permitted. Do not bring valuables, no, uh, no crosses. Weird because it was highly religious, but I don't know why we weren't allowed to have crosses. And there was rules about how much jewelry we could wear, so we could wear one ring per hand, one bracelet, one necklace, one pair of earrings on the earlobe only, and one watch. We weren't allowed to have body piercings. When I came in, I had piercings in my ears, I had piercings in my face, I had a belly button ring, and they checked my belly button, and I was so upset I had to take it in right, right then. I was trying to sneak it in. It didn't work for me. Miss Kate got me. Oh, uh, on the jewelry as well, they had to be studs. We couldn't have little hoops like this. Uh, just had to be like a really simple earring. I don't think we were allowed to have drop earrings, so anything dangly, I don't think we could have that. Linens, blah, blah, blah. Bathing suits, blah, blah, blah. Now let's go into like personal hygiene and makeup products. So like I said, everything we had was counted, including our makeup items. We weren't allowed to bring more stuff into the program if we still had it personal hygiene, so we were allowed one shampoo, one conditioner, one hairspray, one electric razor, one hair dryer, one mousse or gel uh, for your hair, uh, one soap or body wash, one toothpaste, one toothbrush, one curling iron. I had a waiver and I think I had a straightener as well, so I believe we were allowed to have one of each. Oh, and another note, um, we weren't allowed regular razors and the electric razors back in the day, this was in 2009, they were not great. So a lot of us didn't shave for a long time and I didn't have my electric razor for my first two months. So I wasn't able to shave. So on my first pass, my mom brought me stuff to shave with and I shaved my legs on my visit. Which also, now that I think of it, I don't think that was allowed. Um, okay. Makeup is a privilege and must be applied discreetly. Cosmetics are to be stored and applied in the dorm only. Students are not allowed to do each other's makeup, no products containing alcohol. So the products that were approved were foundation, mascara, blush, lipstick, no bright or dark colors, and powder, not allowed. Eyeliner, lip liner, eyeshadow, etc. So we were allowed a really limited amount of makeup products. Sometimes they would have you like wash your makeup off like if you put um if you put makeup that looks like eyeliner like mascara as eyeliner they might send you back to the dorm and you could get these privileges taken away for 30 days and that was always my greatest fear was that i wouldn't have my makeup privileges when i got my off-campus pass uh because then you'd have to see your family in your crappy clothes and with no makeup so the rest of this page is just like about clothing we couldn't borrow clothes from each other we couldn't change in front of each other. We had to always change in the bathroom stalls or the shower stalls. Uh, we weren't allowed to dispose of any clothing. So say you got your period and your underwear or something, um, you weren't allowed to throw it out. And if you wanted to throw it out, you'd have to have the staff look at it and um, then they could give you permission or they could send it back home. And oftentimes they wouldn't just chuck things out, they would send them home. So then it's kind of embarrassing have having like your used items be sent to your parents. But there was a lot of embarrassing things that went on. Uh, daily uniform was a navy polo tucked in and it actually wasn't navy, it was yellow because I was in dorm C, dorm E and dorm D were in burgundy and green. I had to wear yellow. Khaki pants with brown belt socks and casual brown shoes or sneakers. In cold weather, you may wear your sweatshirt as long as the collar's on the outside. We are always to be neat and presentable. 
natural hair colors only. We weren't allowed to touch up highlights or anything. We weren't allowed to color our hair at all unless uh, we were coloring it to bring it back to its original state. So if you were like me and you had a root, you would be allowed with permission from your counselor to dye it back to this root color if you wanted like one tone. But a lot of us just grew our highlights out. I just let mine grow and I had like a pretty heavy root situation. So did my big sis. Okay, do not bring any literature, music, address books, journals, diaries, date books, calendars, headphones, radios, hats, sunglasses, money, gum, candy, personally, uh, anything with alcohol, anything of personal value. Um, we weren't allowed to keep calendars. We weren't allowed to talk about the date. We knew what day it was because the clocks and the computers showed it, but we weren't allowed to talk about time in any capacity. We weren't allowed to say how long we've been in the program, how many months we have left, but we could say things like, my home pass is in four months. And um, everybody knew that you got a home pass after one year. A home pass is a home visit. Counseling, oh, I really wanna talk about this one. So um, counseling, I'll let you go ahead and take a screenshot of this page. And counseling's at the top here. So counseling uh, was a joke. We did not receive adequate or proper counseling. These people believed in religion, they didn't believe in uh, mental health, they didn't believe in like talk therapy. Uh, our talk therapy consisted of sessions talking about like the Bible and like maybe like reading books or for me, I had the oldest counselor there was and she left halfway during my program. But while I was under her care, she would play Joyce Meyer tapes. So every single counseling session that I had with her, and I would be taken out of school for these sometimes, it would be me sat down listening to Joyce Meyer tapes and taking notes on a notebook. I listened to more Joyce Meyer at the age of 15 than I should ever have to in my life. If you're not familiar with Joyce Meyer, she's a televangelist. Uh, if you have very religious parents, they would know exactly who she is. So now I'll say their rules. That was my take on counseling, but now we'll go for their take. So students will be assigned a counselor upon intake. Mr. Bob and Ms. Carla, the directors, are available upon request or when requested by your counselor. Students are not counselors. Do not seek counsel from students. We couldn't really ask each other for advice or talk about our families. It is important to be open and honest in counseling sessions. Counseling can never take the place of personal prayer and searching the scriptures for answers to your personal needs. It is our goal that you would develop deep, deep trust and dependence on Jesus Christ more than any one individual. So that says a lot about how they feel about counseling. Uh, they want us to uh, talk to Jesus and, and otherwise shut up. Uh, classroom rules, be quiet, bring everything, boring, boring. We were taught by our teachers. There was one teacher per 20 students, and many times that teacher had no idea which way was up. Many times that teacher uh, didn't have any sort of like teaching background. Uh, the, the counselor that I got switched to halfway through my program was named Miss Sarah, and I have a lot of issues with her, but um, she was a teacher for the longest time, and then they upgraded her to counselor. So um, when my counselor left, Miss Sarah became a counselor instead. I doubt she was even a counselor and she wasn't even a teacher. She was just a Christian. Okay, so that's it for this page. Uh, at the bottom, it just talks about graduation services. Uh, it was just kind of like a culty service that you had when you finished your program and confiscation. So if you ever forgot something, the staff would take it away for five days. One day I mentioned that I left a sock on the floor. I got a one hour discipline and then she confiscated my sock for five days. Sometimes they would confiscate things that were really annoying to be confiscated like mascara. You only had one mascara. You only had one of everything. So it could be really quite annoying. We tried our best to keep everything in its place so that we wouldn't lose our items. But some of the little girls would always lose things or forget things. There was a little girl, she's 13 years old, and she's on the spectrum, and she was extremely forgetful. At, and no fault of her own, she was so young, and she had, like, other challenges. And she had so many disciplines built up because she would just always be leaving socks on the floor. She would forget, forget to put her... Um, her stuff in her closet, she would leave stuff out, and so she was always disciplined and given no relief. Okay, so fundraisers and rallies, gifts, house rules, illness, laundry, etc. 
Let's go ahead and touch on this page. I'll let you take a screenshot. And um, rallies and fundraisers were exactly what they said. It's when we would go to different churches, we would go to different places, like sometimes high schools, and we would tell our testimonies, which was like our life story and how we got saved and how we're changed now, thanks God to this like wonderful program. And then the directors would collect donations because of us. So we would move people to tears and then the directors would take their money. Uh, it was a system, they would choose girls who had a really compelling story, girls who were good singers. Uh, we would sing songs and stuff, we would put on skits, and um, we obviously weren't allowed to talk to the church members. We would just perform and then we'd be ushered away. Nobody could talk to us and we couldn't talk to anybody else. Um, so the rules are that we will participate in them. We had to, they weren't optional, and then we had to dress appropriately. And then the interesting part about this is that parents were not allowed to attend our rallies. Say like, say you were from Alabama, you couldn't tell your parents when the fundraisers were and they were not allowed, we were not allowed to invite our parents and our parents were not allowed to come without an invitation. And trust me, they would never get an invitation. We were not allowed to have any 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 kind of contact with the outside world and that includes the relationship with our parents it was very limited illness only vomiting severe diarrhea and fever are reasons for staying in bed if a student remains in bed it will be for the entire day and evening only coming out of rules their room for meals they will not be allowed to attend any extracurricular activities with the group so if you were sick and it was movie night uh, you don't get to get up and watch a movie. You have to literally stay in bed the whole time. And also, I only saw somebody stay in bed twice out of all the time I was there. And it was because they were actively throwing up everywhere. Um, if you had a stomach problem, and um, how do I say this? And the staff couldn't see that you had it, then you would get no relief. So many, many times did a student go to the bathroom in their pants because staff denied them bathroom time. And uh, pretty much illness did not stop you from getting up and hanging out with the rest of the group. I'm gonna try to go over this page really quickly. Uh, my camera's about to die, so I'm just gonna hurry up. So students must have parental supervision at all times, close enough to hear all conversations and see if anything is passed through hands. So while we were on pass with our families, uh, they had to listen to us, especially with our siblings. Our siblings could, you know, pass us notes or phones and that was not allowed. We were not allowed to touch phones. We were not allowed to look at the phone. We were not allowed to text. We were not allowed to write letters to friends home. And if we did and our parents were really gung ho about the program and they told on us, then we could get time added. Um, our parents many times believed what the staff told them because the trust was obviously broken for whatever it was that we did at home. So we were not always believed or trusted uh, with our parents on, on pass. My mom was pretty clutch. She would give me the cell phone. She would let me write letters. She would let me uh, take videos for my friends, but my dad would have not allowed that. Uh, we weren't allowed to listen to music that wasn't Christian on pass. We weren't allowed to uh, wear different clothes. So we couldn't change our clothes into like something better looking. We had to stay in our clothes the whole visit. And we all kind of frequented the same places. It was a small town, Columbus. We were in Seal, Alabama, but we would drive into Columbus. And so oftentimes we would see other students on pass and they would tell on you. If somebody saw you wearing a cute outfit, they would tell on you because guess what? They're jealous if they're not in a cute outfit. Um, the student to student relationship was really divided because you just couldn't trust anybody. Sometimes you get like a sneaky smile from somebody if you saw them out, but we weren't allowed to talk to each other. And only if you were willing to risk it all, would you go and talk to another student or interact with them. Um, but I just checked and my camera's dying. So maybe there will be a part three, uh, maybe it will just be in shorts where I can go over some of these other rules. We had rules for our visits, rules for pretty much everything. But like I said, the camera's dying, so I gotta do an outro. I appreciate you guys, I love all your comments. I try to read every single one of them, but there's so many that I can't respond all the time. But I really, really appreciate all the love that I've gotten and all the support and also all the curiosity. I've been waiting to share this for a long time. Uh, this kind of whole experience of everything that's happened to me, 
Um, I brushed on the, the rug for like a good decade. I went when I was 15 and now I'm 28. So yeah, if you have any questions in the comments below and I'll see you for the next one.